Hello everyone, Wylock here, welcome back. Today we're going to use what I understand is a pretty old trick in wargaming scenery, but I learned about it from DM Jim, the tabletop engineer, on his channel. I'm going to be applying this en masse to really fill out my Sector Mechanicus type tables. And at the end I'll have a whole table set up, models and everything, so you can see in context. Jives well with the modular Sector Mechanicus walkways we did in the past, as well as the pipes from the previous episode. But let's go make some incredibly cheap, super easy, sci-fi bunker type buildings out of electrical junction boxes. This is an electrical junction box. Actually, its proper name is a gang box. It's made of plastic and you can find it at any major home improvement or hardware store. They're less than $2 a piece and they come in various sizes. This is a coping saw. Usually it's used in fine carpentry, but it will cut plastic like butter. This saw was under $10 from any store that sells tools. Just make sure you get coarse tooth wood cutting blades with it, not fine tooth metal cutting blades. Very important. So first I cut off that tab on the side. And from there, simply glued on all sorts of junk from my bin. Prescription bottle caps, applesauce pouch cap, toys from a Wendy's kids meal, flex tubing for small telecom cables, $2 for this bag, also from the hardware store, cable ties, cut a portion of it out for instant greeble, plastic cross stitching mesh, available at literally any store that sells sewing supplies, and of course, chipboard. This is the brown slab at the back of a legal pad, but you can buy it in bulk cheaply like I do. The link is in the video description below. All of this is just attached with hot glue, with one exception. That plastic mesh, I used super glue, since it's so thin and I didn't want blobs of hot glue showing. So get creative, mix it up. Here's a few of the dozen I put together in only about 15 minutes. And then it's outside for primer. Krylon or Rust-Oleum make great flat spray primers. One thing I'll share that I've kind of discovered recently, when you use a spray primer, it is dry to the touch after about 30 minutes. But if you try and scratch it, you'll see that it easily does scratch. Do a second coat at that time, and then wait overnight for it to fully cure. Don't take any chances. This is something that I've specifically noticed in my finished products and their longevity. When I started doing two light coats of primer and waiting for it to fully cure overnight, the end result is so durable. These, for example, have large areas of perfectly flat, smooth plastic, and I had my doubts, but again, I cannot scratch them now. I only had gray on hand, so after that was done, I took some bottom grade black spray paint. This was literally less than a dollar per can, and based everything in black. Now when painting these, I didn't want them all to be the same, but also not too diverse, so I stuck with two colors, green and blue. Notice that I have three lightnesses of each, but they're a very muted pastel version of the color. Don't use true blue and true green for your grimdark war game terrain. I also had on hand a gunmetal and a metallic gold. So we'll set to painting these in just a minute, but first, real quick, allow me to appeal to your most charitable nature. There are multiple ways to support the channel if you find the content helpful. Number one, like, subscribe, reminder bell. Number two, Patreon, Wylox Armory. Number three, Amazon affiliate links. Just use the links in the video description below when you buy stuff. Totally transparent to you. The only difference is I get a small commission. Number four, Heroes Horde. For you 3D printers out there, tons of selection, including all True Tiles lines. And number five, my modules on the DMs Guild, written for D&D 5th edition. They're pretty good. Not great, but you know, good. Now we're speed building here, so I don't have time for washes. The technique I used is overbrushing. So a little more paint than if you were dry brushing, but not enough to do a solid base coat. And whip the brush kind of quickly like this in one direction so you get a streaky effect. Looks terrible, right? I know, just give it a moment. So there's still some black underneath showing through, say 20% of it is uncovered, and that's good. Then I went to the mid-tone color, and I repeated the process, but this time with less paint and a lighter touch. Should only cover about 50% of the piece now.
So you got three layers of depth going on and all that streaky texture from the brush helps to mimic the look of a hardened colored metal. In other words, it fakes a texture being there when there isn't one. Lastly, with the lightest of the three tones, I edge highlighted. And these are very fat edge highlights. They don't need to be pretty. Should take less than a minute to edge highlight the whole building. I then painted all my gratings with gold and then all of the other greeble that I attached with gunmetal. Give that a few minutes to dry and then back outside with Krylon Crystal Clear Flat Sealant. Spray it from a good 12 inches away in short sweeping bursts. This dried in less than an hour and after only one coat, I could not chip the paint with my fingernail. Good enough. This is the exact table I showed you in the previous episode when we did the pipes, but on this fly through I'll focus on our new buildings. I did all of these in under 60 minutes, excluding weights for dry times. They're so easy and from two feet away, like when you're playing the game, they look perfectly fine. You don't even notice how crude they actually are. They're not winning awards, of course, but they're perfect instant sci-fi structures. I used somewhat muted tones so that the miniatures remain the star of the show. That step where you start gluing stuff to the box is so much fun and so satisfying. I'm also gobsmacked at how cheap this was. Again, those gang boxes are under $2 a piece. A hardcore hobbyist could definitely use them and trick them up better than I did and do a proper paint job, no doubt. I also love that I didn't use an airbrush. I know many of you out there don't have one, and this is a project that truly, for real, anybody can do. Very fun, very gratifying project, one you could easily knock out in a weekend. If you like this particular project, here's two more you might want to check out. Also enjoy this community showcase. I'm Wylock, thanks for joining, and I'll see you next time.